Hello and welcome to Design Patterns. Today we will talk about the counted pointer. What is the counted pointer all about? The counted pointer is also called smart pointer or shared pointer or auto pointer. This also relates to the unique pointer, but the idea of the unique pointer is a little bit different. We will go into counted pointer idea. The idea behind is we count the references to our objects and call the destructor as soon as no one is using an object anymore. Every time someone is creating a reference, a pointer to our object, we increase this counter and every time this reference is not needed anymore, the counter is decreased. When it reaches zero, we know that the object is not used anymore and we can delete it. In languages like C++, you first have to allocate memory, you have to initialize the memory by calling the constructor of the object, and then you get a reference or a pointer to this object, to this memory location. And you can use the object via this pointer. This is how you commonly use objects in C++ or languages which have pointers. The problem is now, when you have multiple pointers to the same object, you don't know who should delete the object in the end, who should free the memory and release the resources of this object. If you release it too early, others could run into problems because for a while, even if the object is released, the memory location could contain the same value as before. So when you use a pointer to access this memory location, it still could be valid. But after a while, this memory gets overwritten and it is not valid anymore. So you could run into problems, but discover them maybe very late. The structure of the counted pointer looks like this. So the structure looks like this. The client here is using some object and this object is here. This is the actual object we want to use. Here we want to call some methods like this sum method, for example. And normally when we use it, we directly instantiate a pointer to this object and then we use it. But of course, we could not be the only one who instantiated the pointer to this object. There could also be others. So the problem is now who deletes this object and this is not defined. The solution of the unique pointer is that it does not allow multiple access. It allows only one owner of an object and this owner is responsible for deleting it. Sounds very reasonable, but has its restrictions and requires high discipline during programming. Let's go back to the counted pointer. Here it is possible to have multiple access to an object, but via a proxy. And this proxy in this case is called a handle. And the responsibility of this proxy is to store a reference counter. In this variable, we store how many handles are currently alive. And when this counter reaches zero, we know that the last reference was deleted. So also the body can be deleted. These handles work by increasing the reference count in the constructor and decreasing it in the destructor. And when we copy the handle, a new handle is created. When we access it via the arrow operator, we simply return the body of this handle. Think of the scoped resource, which worked quite similar. But there is still something missing in this graphic. And the thing is, where is the body actually deleted? This is done in the destructor of the handle. Here we have an additional check. The destructor does the following check. If the reference counter of the body reaches zero after decreasing it, we can safely delete the body because nobody is referencing it anymore and it gets deleted as soon as this happens. When you think of garbage collection, for example, the deletion of the body happens some time later, but here it happens as soon as the last reference is deleted. There's also another variant and it looks like this. This is called the wrapper variant because in our original version, the reference counter is part of the object, which is sometimes not possible. Sometimes we cannot change the object or store it directly in our body. Therefore, we have another wrapper around our object. So actually our object is now called the target. Here is the method which we want to call. 
and around this target we wrap the body and this body has the reference counter and it's a transparent proxy for our target. The handle doesn't change much, it works the same way as we discussed before, only there is another wrapper in between the actual object which we want to call and the client. Let's talk about the attributes of the counted pointer now. The context is we have a programming language with manual dynamic memory management using pointers. The problem is now, when can we safely destroy an object? As you can imagine, this is not an easy question. As soon as your application reaches a few hundred classes and several thousand lines of code, this is not that trivial anymore. The forces are, if an object is not referenced anymore, it should be destroyed and all of its memory and resources should be released. We have the situation that several clients may share the same objects, which means that multiple references to these objects exist. We don't know exactly who still has a reference to our objects. In languages where pointers are just addresses in memory, we don't have control over who creates a pointer to our object, so we don't know it. We want to avoid dangling references, references which show to a memory location which should have been deleted but is still valid because the content is still in the memory. We tend to forget to delete objects, objects or memory locations which are not needed and are not referenced anymore but still use up the resources and we will never be able to delete it because we don't have a pointer to it anymore. And our solution should be foolproof. The client should not need to think too much about when he's using the objects. Also, the question is why not use garbage collectors? And the reason is that garbage collectors, firstly, introduce a performance overhead. They have to go through the reference tree and see which location is still reachable and which not. And furthermore, the time when the garbage collector works is not deterministic. So it could happen that the object is still alive for a long time until it gets deleted by the garbage collector. But here we want to create high performance applications where the resources are released as soon as we don't need it anymore. The solution is to store a counter for the number of references. Where this counter is stored is open for discussion. We could store it in a global singleton, for example. We could store it in the object itself. We could store it in a wrapper class, which is wrapped around the object. Then we have to implement a proxy, which represents a pointer. But this is the handle. And this proxy should do the following. It should increase the reference counter in its constructor. Whenever a new reference is created, the reference counter should be increased. Whenever a reference is destroyed, also the reference counter should be decreased. And when it's reaching zero, the proxy should delete the object. Furthermore, it should be transparent. It should implement the error operator and should work similar as we are used to use pointers. This should be transparent to the client that he is actually using a proxy. And on the assignment or copy constructor, it should create a new instance so that the reference counting works. And when this instance is destroyed, the reference counter is decreased again. Furthermore, to not mix up our system, we should only allow access to the object via our handle. This is important, because if we still could create normal pointers, someone could circumvent our counted pointer pattern completely, and then it doesn't make sense anymore. So what are the consequences? Our objects get automatically and immediately destroyed if the object is not used anymore. Perfect. The client does not need to worry about dangling references or memory leaks. But what about shared versus unique pointers? As I said before, unique pointers have a different approach. They only allow one owner and this owner is responsible for deleting the object. And when you want to return this pointer, we have to use the move semantics in order to change the owner to another object. We could make weak references, but weak references don't have the responsibility to destroy the object, only the owner has this responsibility. And what about circle references? We have an object which references another object and this other object references the first one again. So here we have a circle reference and the reference counter will never reach zero. So these are difficult to detect. So this was the counted pointer. Think of counting peas. Okay, that was it. Bye and see you next time.